Okay, so we're going to look at um, several problems involving Venn diagrams. Uh, this is for problems that where you're given a percentage of certain people who like to do something or have some probability of doing something. And if we can organize the data into a Venn diagram, uh, then we can attack all of the probability questions uh, separately. So, or after that. Um, so I'm going to actually do them in separate videos, uh, one problem at a time, just because I think they'll be a little shorter and easier to follow. So the first problem says, suppose 48% of people surveyed like coffee and 82% surveyed like chocolate. If 35% of people like both coffee and chocolate, find the following probabilities. And then it goes through and asks us uh, to find a bunch of probabilities. But before we do any of those probabilities, the thing that makes the most sense to do is to complete a Venn diagram. So I've set up a Venn diagram over here and I'm gonna work on filling in the numbers with us together. So first off, when we do the Venn diagram, we always wanna look at the innermost area first and that's the intersection here uh, between coffee and chocolate. So I'm using CH for chocolate, C for coffee and do we know how many, what percentage of people like both um, in this problem? In this problem we do, 35% of the people like both coffee and chocolate. So that middle area, we do that first, is 0 0.35. And the reason I have to do this first is because, you know, of the 82% of the people who like chocolate, some of them also like coffee. In fact, there's 35% of the people who like coffee. So if I want to figure out how what the, what the percentage of people are who are in this other sort of region of the Venn diagram, this part, of chocolate that doesn't like coffee, I have to sort of do subtraction. So A to take away the overlap, 35, uh, 35, so 42 would be seven, and it's gonna be 47% who like coffee, like chocolate, but not coffee. So that other region of chocolate here is 0 0.47. And you can't figure this out until you've figured out the middle part. Okay, and luckily in this problem it was given. And then the other portion, who likes coffee, but doesn't like chocolate, that's over here. And again, we'll start with our 48%. And we'll take away the 35% who like both. And that's leaving us with 13%. Um, you can also see in my Venn diagram, I went ahead and changed everything to decimal. It's easier to deal with rather than looking at percentages. Um, we could also look at uh, the total number of people. If, if We'll do an example like that in a minute where we don't know the percentages, but we know the, the quantities of people surveyed. Okay, so there's actually one more region. We got all the people who like chocolate, all the people who like coffee, people in the middle who like both, and then outside of both coffee and chocolate is the people who don't like either. And we have to figure out what percentage is left. So we add these three percentages up in these regions. So we've got you know 47% plus 35% because the whole universe should equal 100% plus 13%, and that's 47, 50, 60, 70, and that's 95%. So to figure out the remaining part, it's 100% minus that total, or outside of both circles, we've got 5%. So I'm gonna put that up here. 0 0.05. Okay, so I complete my Venn diagram first. Oh, uh, I don't want that. Everything else will be easier after that. So now, once the Venn diagram is complete, we can look at these probabilities. And again, we want to write the notation and then find the result. And we want to use our Venn diagram, hopefully, to find these results probability a person doesn't like coffee. So, you know, cover up everyone who likes coffee, and then people outside of the coffee circle, that would be the 47 plus the 0 0.05 who don't like either. 
or 52% of the people don't like coffee. Another way to do that would be just to say, oh, if 48% of the people like coffee, then 52% don't like coffee. Probably easier to do that. Okay, the probability a person likes coffee or chocolate. So this is where I could go back to a formula or I could just look at my picture and say, okay, who is in either circle? Well, in, over here, it's these three values, 0 0.47, 0 0.35, and 0 0.13. So I'm just gonna add those up, 0 0.47 plus, and these are already percentages, so I don't have to divide by anything. 0 0.35, excuse me, ah. 35 plus 0.13, add them up, 95%. Likes either coffee or chocolate. And the probability a person likes coffee given that they like chocolate. So again, a conditional probability. I'm gonna set up my fraction bar. And I'm gonna do the denominator first. What percentage of people like chocolate? We know that from the given, it's 82%. And what percentage of those, or what, what quantity inside that 82% like chocolate? So it's these people that are inside of both, 35%. And if you think about that formula, it's exactly what I've just done. Um, the probability of the intersection divided by the probability of chocolate. And I'll just type this in here. Oh, no. Uh, there we go. Let me this equal sign. Uh, equals, oh, no, sorry. Technical issues. Five divided by 0 0.82, 43%. Uh, 43%, 42.68. Uh, probability a person doesn't like chocolate, but does like coffee. So they're not in chocolate, but they are in coffee. So you, know, you, you could think of like all those people disappearing and just look at who's left in coffee, and it's this 13% over here. I guess that's not highlighting very well, but there it is. That 13% likes coffee, but does not like chocolate. So you notice the Venn diagram gives you these answers if we understand the Venn diagram. Okay, according to this data, are liking chocolate and liking coffee independent? So again, you know, independence, you can find it several different ways. Um, there, you know, I, I can look at, I can, we can look at this and kind of see that it's, they're not independent because, you know, there's several different ways to measure independence. One would be to say the probability of A intersect B, if you're independent, the intersection should equal the product probability of A times the probability of B. So we actually know these three probabilities. So what's the probability of the intersection? That's 0 0.35. And we want to know, you know, is that equal to, what's the probability I like chocolate? That's 82% times, what's the probability I like coffee? Uh, that's 48%. And these things would have to be equal if, they were independent. So, but 0 0.35 is not going to be equal to 0 0.82 times 0 0.42. I don't think. Might have to multiply that to make sure. 0 0.35 does not equal to 0 0.3444. So they're not independent. Um, another way to think about that is to look at the conditional probabilities because we have more than one condition that gives us independence. Um, we could say, well, we know they're independent if the probability of chocolate 
they like chocolate given they like coffee is equal to the probability they like chocolate. In other words, if the probability they like chocolate is unaffected by the probability whether, by whether or not we know they like coffee as well. So this conditional probability, probably like chocolate given they like coffee, sort of the reverse of the part C, we look at how many total people like coffee, and that's the 48% inside of coffee, and of those, how many like chocolate? It's this 35% on top, so 35 over 48 is 0.7292, and the probability like chocolate is 0.82. Since those are not equal, the events are not independent. So I've done that two different ways, both with the same result, not independent. According to this data, are liking chocolate and liking coffee mutually exclusive? Explain. So mutually exclusive would mean they cannot happen at the same time. Um, another way of saying it is that, you know, in your Venn diagram, you would have to have a picture that looks like that. <laughs> meaning they don't overlap, or the probability of A intersect B would have to equal zero. But in this case, if this is my A and my B, that's what mutually exclusive would look like. Um, another way would be A and not A. A and not A are always mutually exclusive. Um, so showing you in this particular case, because the probability of chocolate and coffee is 35%, put that in here, that clearly is not zero, hence they are not mutually exclusive. Okay, finally, copy this guy. Just give it one more page. I'll make that black. And I'll leave this page here so you can pause if you want to sort of get those answers checked. Um, we'll do a couple more like this where you know we have to figure out the middle part first based on some other information that's given in the problem. In this problem, I gave you that 35% of the people like them both. So that allows us to fill the middle part in easier. Um, I can give you that information um, without telling you the and, I can give you sort of conditional probability information and that can also tell us, or we can, um, if we, instead of having percentages, if we know the totals of people involved, we can also calculate it sort of knowing that we can't go over the total number of people. Okay, so we'll do a couple more examples and I'm gonna have those in separate videos.